Hello and welcome, fair residents of Jefferson County and beyond. Welcome to the 2021 Virtual Jefferson County Fair. My name is Sam, and my magic name is Alicus Sam. And I am a magician and a science educator. I've been doing magic for some 48 years now, ever since I was born. And I've also been a science teacher for, well, more than 30 years. So we will be looking at some science phenomena that seem magical, and then we'll together we'll figure out the science behind it. Now we're going to start with a little production here. I have a couple items I want to show you. I have a tray. Can you tell what this is a tray of? It's shaped like? Yeah, it's a fish. Can you tell what kind of fish it is? White fish, you say? No, actually... It's a rainbow trout, <laughs> so it's a colorful tray. That's one thing I have. The other thing I have is a colorful silk handkerchief. And this handkerchief has a pattern on it, a rainbow pattern, that is sort of in the shape of a bullseye. I'm gonna start by taking that bullseye handkerchief, laying it across the tray, and watch the magic. One, two, three, out of his hand. And we have produced a, a Taurus. A Taurus, a Taurus, you say? Yes, a Taurus is a three-dimensional shape that can be made from a two-dimensional shape known as a circle. And I'm going to start by showing you some magic with a flattened one of these Taurus rings. And when flattened, there are, you can count them, one, two, three, four, blah, 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 14 rings, 14 metal rings. And you can see right now, I have them tied to this rope with a double knot. Now, this double knot tie here is one of the more difficult tricks I'm going to try attempt today. And it's difficult because the knotting is done one-handed, and you simply throw the rings to get them double knotted on the rope. Now we're going to work up to that. I'm going to start by showing you some magic tricks that magicians traditionally do with a single ring. So usually they have a single metal ring and a rope. Now since I've got 14 rings here today, this is probably like 14 times more difficult than usual. Yet I'm going to still attempt it. The rings are on the rope. As you can see, the rope is on the rings. Quite firmly attached, as you can see. Watch the magic. Boom! Those rings are off of the rope. The rope is off of the rings. Or are they? If I just pull these towards you, boom! It's back. <laughs> Some more penetrating magic. We'll have the rings attached to the rope. This one happens a little quicker, so watch the magic. Boom! Those rings are separate from the rope. Now this time I'm just going to throw the rope boom, back on there. And then... Well, as you may have guessed, there's more to these 14 rings than meets the eye because they can become a torus. A very dynamic torus and being a magician, I'm fond of rope tricks, so I played around with using a Taurus ring on a rope. But if you have one of these, or if you endeavor to get one or some, after this demonstration, you can put them on a lot of things. You can put it on a broom handle, a pool cue, a rope, all right, I promised you I would try to do the one-handed double knot, ring, throw, tie, and I intend to carry through with that promise. It's, it's just so challenging. I want you to see what's involved ahead of time, so I've got a slow motion video here that reveals what's going on. It happens so quick, it's hard to tell what happens, but notice the rope flips over the rings and ties on 
to the rope. Wish me luck after the slow light moves. Okay, here goes. The rope needs to be in a very nice U-shape. The rings are separate from the rope. I'll simply slide it over the U-shape and watch them. Whoa! It's time. Here's the other thing I found to demonstrate it with. And that is a piece of vinyl tubing, plastic tubing. Let's again put the 14 rings on there and watch them expand. And they expand and they grip. So this is uh, marketed as a Toro Flux or a kinetic bracelet. And you can wear it on your wrist and pass it from hand to hand, to person to person as it goes down your wrist or arm. Now, the torus is the math name for the shape that this takes on. For starters, what is this flat shape that I have here? What's this called? Yep, a circle. So a circle is a flat two-dimensional shape. Now, what do we call shapes that are not flat, but instead are ones that you can hold? They're not two-dimensional. They're three-dimensional. You got it. So this two, a two-dimensional circle, if you were to rotate it in space, just spin it around like so, tell me what is the name of that geometric 3D shape? Yeah, that would, that would be a sphere. Now, if you were to take the same flat circle and rotate it around a point in space, rotate it around that point, it would form what's called a torus. Yeah, that ring shape, the name for that is a torus. A torus is a three-dimensional shape made by rotating a circle. And some interesting properties of this Toro Flux. It's really just one piece of steel connected at the two ends. So while it's 14 rings, while it's flat, after it expands, there are 13 rings. Ooh, where does the 14th ring go? A little magic, a little math. Another fun way to show these off is using a multitude of Taurus rings and attaching this... <laughs> to this show is going to include a demonstration with a multitude, an even greater multitude of Toro fluxes. That demonstration <laughs> in Jefferson County Fireland know what is combustion? Have you heard the way it's a science word for something that I know you're familiar with you've heard of? Combustion is fire. If something is burning, it's, it's combusting, it's on fire. And since I'm gonna be showing you a combustion demonstration here, this is one that you should not try at home. This is nothing for you to attempt. I'm a professional science demonstrator and I've got safety equipment at the ready, a fire extinguisher here and safety goggles that I'll wear whenever I'm doing a combustion reaction. Well, let's first talk about the science of combustion and what it takes to make fire. There are three necessary components to make fire. What are there? Who can name one? 
Yeah, wood, paper, or something to burn, wax, gasoline. You need what's called fuel. For the, so the first ingredients for combustion is fuel. What else are we going to need to make a fire? Yeah, a spark or some heat, some way to start it, whether it's a lighter, a match, or hitting some rocks together to create a spark. You need heat to start a fire. So fuel, heat, and what's the last thing? There's one more thing essential for fire. Without it, fire doesn't work. Yeah, oxygen. Yeah, fire needs air. Air, the air we breathe, has about 16% oxygen, and thank goodness, because we need oxygen to breathe, but it's also a, a, an essential ingredient for combustion or fire. If there's no oxygen, if there's no air, a fire will go out. And so that's one way to extinguish a fire, is by smothering it and taking away the air so that it stops. Now, we know that the ingredients are heat, fuel, and oxygen. I had a question for you. Do you think metal could be a fuel? Does metal burn? Hmm, I see some people shaking their heads. Other people saying yes. Oh, that it melts? All right, interesting ideas. I'll tell you this. Um, one thing we're familiar with with metal is um, using it to make our pots and pans for cooking. And it works out well when we put a saucepan on the stove. It doesn't catch on fire because metal doesn't burn at the temperatures that a stove works. So metal's a good material to do cooking with because it doesn't catch on fire and it conducts the heat well, which helps with cooking. However, our stoves, our ovens, they only get so hot. Now, if you were to get that metal pan hotter, even hotter, add more energy than a stove provides, that metal pot, it would melt. It would become a liquid metal. It would become what's called molten. And that molten metal, if you added more heat, it would combust. It would combine with oxygen and go up into the atmosphere. So metal can burn if you get it hot enough. Now, the combustion demonstration I'm going to show you, the magic to it is where does the heat come from? I'm going to describe the fuel and the oxygen, but where does the heat come from? That's the secret we're trying to figure out. The steel that I'm going to use for fuel is something called steel wool. And steel wool is a product you can get at a hardware store. People will use steel wool instead of sandpaper sometimes to smooth things out. Now steel wool, it's called steel wool because it's made of steel and it, it's soft, bendable. It feels soft like wool, but there's no wool in steel wool. No, these are pure threads of steel. So these are all tiny, thin threads of steel. And uh, what I did is I took about a third of one of these pads of steel wool, and then I fluffed it up a whole bunch. I took time to separate it out so that it would get lots of oxygen. So the fuel is the steel. There's plenty of oxygen in the room that I'm in. And since I fluffed it up, it can get to the fuel. Let's watch the science. Once again, I'll be using a magic wand to do the science. All I have to do is say, Alakazam. That steel wool is on fire. It is combusting. And what a beautiful combustion reaction. Watch the combustion weave its way through the steel wool. Now, how did it catch on fire? Where did the heat come from? We'll figure that out, but I want to tell you that that steel is an alloy. It's a mixture of iron and carbon. And the iron is combusting. It's burning. It's combining with oxygen, forming a compound called iron oxide. Yeah, so there's something actually building up on this steel wool. So the gray steel wool is turning black because of the accumulation of iron oxide. Well, interestingly, or at least I think it's interesting, this steel is gaining weight as it burns. It's getting heavier. Now, usually we think of things when they burn, they get lighter. If you put a log on a fire, a heavy log, and it burns thoroughly, what are you left with? What's after, after a log burns all the way? Yeah, there's just ashes, and those ashes weigh a lot less than the log. Where did the weight go? Well, that log was mostly made of carbon, and that carbon during combustion combines with oxygen in the atmosphere and goes up in the air in the form of carbon dioxide. 
So that is part of the problem with burning things like fossil fuels that are riddled with carbon. It sends a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is not good. But the um, iron here is accumulating in the form of iron oxide on the surface of the steel wool. Once this combustion reaction comes to a halt, and I predict it will, I will be able to show you where the dark and the light parts of the steel wool are. And then we need to figure out how did the combustion reaction start? Where on earth did the heat come from? Busted set. Oh, there it is. It came to a halt. I can now show you the steel wool up close and see how it's black in most places. There's some patches of gray here, unburnt steel wool. I'm going to put that towards the top, those gray patches of unburnt steel wool. And let's watch once again as I use my magic wand to start the combustion reaction. Alakazam. Alakazam. Abracadab. Wait, what's that? What's that on that wand of yours, Alakazam? Oh, it's a battery. Yeah, not a lighter. It's a battery, a 9-volt battery. And when these two, I had it taped on there secretly. So I was hiding the battery. And that's what provided the heat to get it started. Because when these two metal terminals touch the thin wires, electricity from the battery goes through the wire. And the wire is too thin to handle this amount of electricity. And so what it creates is something called resistance. And resistance is heat. So the secret to the combustion demonstration is heat from the electricity in the, from the hidden battery started the reaction. Now I mentioned to you about how the steel wool gains weight during the combustion process. Well, do you all know what is a scale or a balance? Uh, in this next video, scientists in the lab on the lab table have set up a balance, which is just a meter stick on a fulcrum. And, on one end of the balance, there's a little white stone that's heavier than the steel wool at the other end of the balance. The other end of the balance has a metal fireproof tray in which they put the fluffed up steel wool. And you'll see that, well, my favorite way to ignite it is with a battery. Um, they just use an open flame. So you can light the steel wool if it's fluffed. Watch it as it burns and see if you can tell when the steel wool gets heavier than the rock gains enough weight to tip the scales. Now, I promised you a finale that included a Toro Flux demonstration. We have eight Toro Flux rings. Watch the magic. One, two, three. All expand to form three dimensional toruses. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is magic by Alakasan. Thanks for having me and have a wonderful day.